Let's characterize the three-pole motor that we made in the last video. The motor spins pretty fast, so I've decided to reduce the speed and increase the torque by using a gear train. If you take a look at the motor, the little gear has 10 teeth and the larger gear has 56 teeth, so the gear ratio is 5.6. When the motor spins around, it's going to spin 5.6 times faster than the pulley, but the pulley is going to have 5.6 times the torque. The pulley has a thread which reels in a little bucket that we've made out of paper. What we're going to do is to put screws into this little bucket, and we're going to see how the speed of the motor changes as we change the number of screws in the little bucket. As we add more screws to the bucket, we expect the motor to turn more slowly. Now we have our motor attached to a DC power supply and I'm monitoring the voltage here with a voltmeter. If I turn on the DC power supply, we can see that the nominal voltage that I've chosen here is 40 volts. But I wanna show you something. If I turn the motor on, we can see that the voltage of the motor is going to drop. You might've noticed that the voltage was reduced temporarily to something like 22 volts. The reason for that is that our DC power supply here is not perfect. When the brushes make contact with the commutator of the motor, the power supply is almost short-circuited and the power supply has trouble maintaining the voltage. We're not sure exactly what the average voltage is, but I think our voltmeter here is giving us something pretty accurate. Now, we're interested here in the speed of the motor versus the number of screws that I put into this little bucket. In order to measure the speed of the motor, I'll be using a device called a tachometer. Now, this has a little laser inside of it, basically an optical sensor, and I've placed a piece of black tape covering half of the pulley. The black tape can provide a good optical contrast for this sensor, which can then give us a nice measure of RPM of the motor. Let's go ahead and see how fast this motor can spin without any screws in the bucket. Two hundred and four RPM. Let's put one screw in the bucket and see if the speed changes. One hundred and seventy seven RPM. I'm going to go ahead and add four screws to the bucket so that we've got five in there in total. Let's see how the speed of the motor changes. 172 RPMs. I'm going to add another four screws to the bucket. 138 RPM. I'm going to add another four screws. hundred and twenty six RPMs with 13 screws. Let's go for 17 screws. 120 RPM. I've added four more, so we now have 21 screws in the little bucket. 101 RPM. Let's try 25 screws. 57 RPM. The motor wasn't spinning very quickly with 25, so let's add just one more screw to the bucket to see if it can still turn with 26. 48 RPM. Let's add one more screw to make it 27. 27. You can see that the motor is stalling it can't lift anymore. We've got quite a lot of current going through it, but it can't turn. Let's try it again. The motor can't quite turn with 27 screws. What we expect with a DC brushed motor like this is a linear relationship between the speed and the number of screws in the bucket or the weight. But what we really want is a graph of speed versus torque. In order to get the torque, we're first going to have to convert the number of screws into mass. I have a scale right here. Let's weigh the bucket of screws using this scale. 
It looks like the bucket weighs about 54 grams, and that corresponds to 27 screws. This is enough information for us to change the x-axis of our plot into mass. In order to find the torque, we need to first convert that mass into newtons by multiplying at times the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. This basically gives us the force, or the weight. In order to find the torque, though, we're going to have to find the length of the lever arm. In other words, the radius of the pulley. Let's measure it. The pulley has a radius of 17 millimeters. With that information, we can find the torque along the x-axis. Furthermore, we can convert the speed, now given in RPM, into radians per second. We now have a standard speed versus torque graph for our DC motor. It turns out that for brushed DC motors, we expect this curve to be linear. And as you can see, our curve does indeed look approximately linear. If we wanted to design some piece of equipment and use our motor to do useful work in our design, this is the graph that we would need to refer to.